The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Before we get to this week's movie, I want to shit a little bit on my older brother, Joe. Uh, always fun. Always fun. I think we um, should do a lot more of it. I think it would be very therapeutic for you. And hilarious no, for me. No, no, no. Uh, um, in between last week, where uh, we had a bit about Hurricane Jose yes. and this week... Um, I wrote the Hurricane Jose bit specifically because we were talking about Flight of the Concords and you were talking about how they were funny, but it was like a quiet funny. It was like a subtle funny. It wasn't yeah. in your face. And I thought I all of the things that you, Bunny, said about Flight of the Concords, I'm going to try and get those things and put it into a bit. And I thought oh, it would nice. be funny if I'm talking about Hurricane Jose and then I'm low-key also talking about my brother, but I don't do it so directly in your face and i thought I'd, i i thought i could try and get your feelings on this band and turn it into a bit and i thought it was kind of funny and then you released it as its own separate track and i thought oh this is great i'm gonna share it oh wait my brother just wrote a post what's this post about oh he's now divorced and living in a ghetto uh hotel and um, he's now going to AA and trying to better himself. Okay. Way to cock block my bit, Joe. Yeah. I'm not saying that my brother specifically went about trying to do this. I'm just saying it's a very Jose thing that once I come up with a funny bit, he finds a way where he cannot be made fun of. Oh, yes, he can. That's basically my entire life with this man. Oh, yes, he can. And you know why he can? You know, you, you know why? Why? Because this is our podcast, okay? This is our podcast. Oh, God damn it. Oh, so, yeah, now, you're in, now you're in AA and you're divorced and you don't have a family and your life has been ruined and you've hit rock bottom and now you're slowly trying to bring yourself up and you're going to a gym and you're struggling and uh -huh. oh my god now you're the victim and you're trying so hard to own back your life god damn it i just came up with a funny thing mm -hmm. i Nothing. have i have no personal attachment to your brother nope. so i can make fun of him in his pain as much as yes, I would can. like. And yes, I designate you as my representative in that. Okay. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> well, then, Rick and Bunny, uh, buncing with the stars. Last week, we discussed Tom Cruise's film, The Mummy. Yes. A boring uneventful bit of boardroom movie making that is in no way fun unless you always wanted to see Jurassic World with a less handsome lead and with more dead people and then boom you were in luck and also you're really fucking weird because why would you want that but hey whatever man circus monkey you do you yeah but the Mummy really bummed us out here at the Pope on film. It did. We usually try and be positive, but there's just nothing positive about The Mummy. It's just a corporate film. There's no heart. There's no soul. There's no pancreas. There's nothing no. in this film that shows that it is in any way created by passion. It's created... I by men in boardrooms named uh -huh. Chad. Mm -hmm. I I had to have my doctor up my dosage because of the mummy. That's how depressing this film is. Yeah. That is how depressing this film is. So, plus, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, now that I'm really thinking about last week's film, and I'm kind of impressed that I didn't think about it last week, but... Um, fuck, guys, you couldn't spend five 
fucking seconds. Adding a Brendan Fraser cameo in this bitch. Oh, God, yes. I, I, what the I, fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, come on, the dude's probably living in a fucking buddy's couch, Kato Kalen style. You couldn't have shoved in a tiny ass fucking Brendan Fraser cameo up in this bitch. And the and the Brendan Fraser character see the Brendan Fraser mummy had the actual mummy. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean I mean he was different a bit, but he was still Imhotep. Yeah. You know? Dude's broke as hell for shit's sake. You couldn't add a fucking five second fucking cameo up in that bitch. Yeah. Fuck is wrong with you? Heartless fucking bastards. Named Chad. Yeah, except that, except that. Okay, I unfortunately i have a counter because i don't i i I don't want to give the mummy credit for anything but if if our theory about brendan frazier is correct that he is living in somebody's garage house yes um or carriage house or anything like that and they did get him for a cameo you know he would spend the whole fucking time trying to expand his part oh yeah definitely but goddamn, like, really? You couldn't have shown him for, like, five seconds? Giving him, like, a bit of a break on his alimony payments? Yeah. He, that, he would be throw like... him a bone. He, he would be like, okay, okay, what about this? What about this? In this scene, okay, I'm standing in a doorway, and, and Tom Cruise and the other guy walk by, and I just smile and wave. Oh yeah, he would have been. He would have been like. He would have been like really thirsty. Like, okay, I understand. I walk into the scene, but what about I zip line in? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would have been him. Like every second, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, last week left a sour taste in our throats. So. For this week, instead, we decided to switch gears and do something different, something fun, something third. I I couldn't think of a third thing. Yeah. And boy, fucking howdy, do we have something different. I love this movie. I love this movie. I love this movie. I love this movie. God, I love this movie. The 2017 stylized crime drama car action romance musical comedy Baby Driver. Yes. The title, interesting fact, comes from the Simon and Garfunkel song of the same name entitled Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Baby Driver Has Tinnitus from an Accident at Childhood. Yes. That song always made me cry. Yeah, always made me cry too. Tinnitus. Very sad. Now, I know I haven't said this before, and I know this will come as a shock. I know that many Pope on Film fans will be surprised by this, but yeah. God damn, I love this movie. I I I don't think I love it as much as you, but I oh, think I'm, I could find I think I could find a place for it in my top ten. It's so quotable. Like movies of all time. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. Be, uh, absolutely, it's so quotable. Like like I was telling Emerald over and over again about how much I love this movie at like one a.m. one night because it's stupid me. Like we record on Thursday, so then on Friday I said. Oh, I'll just start watching the movie at 11 a.m. Yeah. at 11 p.m. And, you know, I'll get like halfway through the film and that'll help me out. And then tomorrow I'll watch the rest of the film. So then I'm there at 1 a.m. just hopped up on goofballs, basically. <laughs> going, oh, my God. I love this movie. I need to talk to everybody about this movie. So I'm talking to Emerald about it. And she's just basically like listening to me and nodding my head. So I, I figure I need to like 
come at her with a scene. And the scene that I chose is one of my favorite scenes. And I've already quoted this like a million times. Yeah. Um, Kevin Spacey told his crew that the wardrobe for this crime is the Michael Myers Halloween mask. Oh. <laughs> so the oh guy who chooses the masks, the guy who bought the mask is passing out these uh, Austin Powers International Man of Mystery masks. <laughs> and because the casting is really weird, Flea and Jamie Foxx is like, what the fuck is this? Uh-huh. It's like, it's Mike Myers. Yeah, baby. No, he said Michael Myers. And then for some reason, this Asian guy, apparently his voice changes when he's yelling. Yeah. Because this Asian guy goes, oh, it's Michael Myers. No, it's Mike Myers. It's Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. No, he said Michael Myers. And the Asian guy goes, this is Michael Myers. <laughs> no, from Halloween. No, the Halloween mask. This is a Halloween mask. <laughs> I know. Like his voice completely changes when he's yelling. And I love that. It was such no, a you know, the guy in the horror movie that's killing everybody. Oh, you mean Jason? No! <laughs> yes. And then finally yes. they put their, their their Austin Powers masks on and they're ready to go out the car, but now Baby has to stop them because he has to restart the song. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That, that part killed me. What a what a genius little, little bit. And yeah. how spot on. Like, I could totally see that really happening. Yeah. And yeah. the whole conversation. Yeah. The original reason why I wanted to see this movie solely comes from the soundtrack. Like, I heard, like, okay, the guy who did Scott Pilgrim, which I love, and uh, uh, Shaun of the Dead, he's doing this crime movie, and yeah. okay, the driver listens to music all the time okay yeah i get it okay whatever that is probably good and maybe one day down the road i will listen to it i will watch it and i, I bet it's good and then i, mean, I was hearing like like a small amount of buzz because yeah. not a lot of people were watching it but the people who were watching the film in theaters fucking loved it yeah and I'm like, oh, have you seen Baby Driver? You should see Baby Driver, Steve. You're really going to like it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I've heard about it. I'm aware of the people making the film, and I know I'll watch it eventually. Yeah. But what got me was, number one, I heard best soundtrack of all time. But then what got me was the story that I said like a, a week or two, a, a few weeks ago, of um, uh, James Gunn. Yeah was making Guardians of the Galaxy 2 at the same time that Edgar Wright was making this movie. Yes. And so James Gunn, being James Gunn, he said, oh, is that what his movie is about? Baby Driver? Well, fuck it. I'll give him a call. Beep, boop, bop, boop, beep, bop, boop. Edgar, hey, it's James. Yeah, okay. So what's the movie you're making? What's it about? Okay, so you're using a lot of music. Okay, I'm making Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'm using a lot of music. So do you have a list of the m music you want to use? Okay, because I have a list too. Mm -hmm. So let's go through this right now and figure out exactly what songs we want to use because I don't want to use the song you use and use use the song I use. So we got to figure this out now. And they literally went through the entire list of all of the songs they wanted to use yeah. and like paired them off. And there were like, "Oh, you want to use this song, James? Okay, yes. I wanted to use this song, so I cannot use this if you want to use this." And they literally like gentlemen did up and, and and okay and and at first that scared me coming into baby driver yeah. but turned out to be a move of absolute genius even though i wasn't as happy with the music in guardians of the galaxy as i was yeah. in the first one okay it 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 was yeah. still guardians of the galaxy i, I 
honestly believe that's possible. Yeah. What? Yeah. I believe that that's 100% David Hasselhoff's fault. Yes. <laughs> that's all his fault. Just to be clear, that's all his fault. But after after having watched Baby Driver, I, I was I was like 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 yes, there was a certain similarity. Okay? But watching Baby Driver I I would have hated if it had any real Guardians of the Galaxy sounding songs. Oh yeah, and I Absolutely. would and and I would hate Guardians of the Galaxy if it had. Well, I would not hate Guardians of the Galaxy. I fucking take that back. I I would have been annoyed at it if it had any of the songs for this movie because the oh, yeah. songs they had in this movie perfectly match this movie oh yeah and they like do guardians not the match galaxy, guardians of the galaxy you can kind of like pick and choose songs and a, like there are a number of songs that you can kind of put in and out of guardians of the galaxy but baby driver they've got to be fucking perfect yeah they've got to be on fucking point so it's like it's like Beyonce. I think I mentioned this an episode or two ago. Like I didn't care for Beyonce. Beyonce never I I like Beyonce just wasn't my thing. Yeah. But Jack White does a duet with Beyonce in her last album and that's when I'm like, okay, I guess I have to give Beyonce a chance cuz if Jack White sees something in Beyonce yeah. then I will give Beyonce a chance. And having the director of Guardians of the Galaxy call Baby Driver up and talk about their soundtracks at length, that's when I'm like, okay, if Guardians of the Galaxy is giving Baby Driver a chance, then maybe I will just open my heart up a bit more to Baby Driver. Okay, yes. next chance I get, I will definitely see Baby Driver because from all I can tell, this is going to be great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and and one of the things that that caught me that that I I made a mistake, and and I kind of like it, um, because I, I put the trailers in the episodes. Like at the end of the episode, I I, I put yeah. the trailer for whatever the next movie is, you know, and I'll usually go get that trailer shortly after the. Uh, after we like like whatever this week's movie the next week's movie is going to be i'm going to probably be downloading it like an hour after we finish wrapping this up you know yeah. and i don't really watch the trailer i just watch enough of the trailer to make sure that that is in fact the trailer okay yeah and when i saw his girlfriend briefly i was like isn't that the chick from Twin Peaks? Is it? Who worked? No, no fucking way. Who worked in the diner? But on a quick look, it looks like her. Okay. Okay. And, and I was like, that is not possible. But I, 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 I thought so so much, even though it's completely. I mean. She would be 110 by now, you know? She's not, she cannot possibly still be the cute waitress that she was in the original run of Twin Peaks, because that's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. That, that the second she came on the screen, I had to, I had to look at her. I had to completely focus nice. on her and be yeah. like, yeah, no, that's not her. But damn, there's a similarity. Nice. <clears throat> Very nice. I yeah. I um I think it says something about this movie that I have no idea who starred in this film and I haven't bothered to look him up. What's that? I'm sorry. It, I think it says something about this movie and how much it means to me that I literally have no fucking idea who starred in this goddamn film. Yeah. And I I I don't think I've seen him in anything else? I may have, but I'm also not IMDb'ing him because from here on out, 
he is Baby Driver. Yeah. Because the next time I see him in something, I'm going to say, oh, Baby Driver is in this. There was a part of this movie where we see Baby Driver. Um, I, I don't know exactly what he was wearing. I think it was like a kind of sweatshirt, and then there was kind of like a darker, almost vest-looking thing, but I think it was actually part of the sweatshirt. Yep. But as soon as I saw him, I thought to myself, oh, fuck, why didn't they get this guy for Han Solo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Although, to be fair, although, to be fair, I really do love that um, um, that guy from Hail Caesar. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know him, so I only know him from Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar is an okay movie, but there's one or two really good scenes and yeah. he's in one or two of them. And anyway, anyway. The way I described Baby Driver online was if Scott Pilgrim had sex with pulp fiction and their baby had turned out to be a musical. And that nails it. That nails it so well that after I... Okay, that nails it so well that Jeannie and I were having a conversation about it while we were watching it, making the comparison to Reservoir Dogs fucking close enough, you know? Yeah. And after after I had watched it for the... After I had watched Baby Driver, I had to go watch Scott Pilgrim. I, I had yeah. to go watch Scott Pilgrim, yeah. Pilgrim again. Yeah, there's just some stylized moments that are just perfect. That have moments of 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 both films in there. And but, what and what is it about a movie that if you put a diner in it, it gives it a slight fifties feel? I have no idea. I but have no idea. It? Just gee, oh yeah, oh yeah, just some sort of subconscious thing that we all have about diners but let me tell you something let me let me start off by shaming this movie a little bit i'm gonna try and shame it but i'm i know i'm not going to succeed okay i when i went when i was in high school it was the last year where you did not have to have a foreign language Okay, uh-huh. When I graduated, they said, okay, everyone after Steve, you have to take a foreign language for a year. Yeah. During high school. And then freaking Emerald is like, okay, well, my first semester, I'm going to take Latin. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I understand what... what I, I, no, you have to take two years of a foreign language. And I'm like, okay, I understand what you're saying. Like, you're picking, like, the cool, different choice, but you really should pick something different. It, the, there's no reason for you to choose this. And then it, after she took Latin, the school said, hey, guess what? Um, we're not doing Latin anymore, and you need... Um, Two consecutive years. Oh. So this year of Latin doesn't count. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's whole that's year Oklahoma. This... Yeah, yeah, that's oh fucking Oklahoma. Oh, my God. I, I mean, it, it's fucking Latin, for Christ's sakes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Fuck yeah. everything. That should make her, like, valedictorian. Yeah, like one year of Latin should count as two years of language. How but many any, people in your life have you ever, in your life, have you ever met anybody who who speaks Latin? The only one is the kid from Rushmore, and that doesn't count. That No, that does not count. Yeah. So, so I was so happy, like, yes, I, I right under... 
right under the 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 barrier there. I don't have to take a language. Thank fucking God, because I cannot learn Spanish. I have a barrier in my brain yeah. that stops me from learning Spanish. I just can't do it. Yeah. It was Natasha that finally said, like, you know what? I think you can't learn Spanish because you hate Mexicans. I, I, frankly, I was like, just thinking like, that. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I've never thought of that before. And it's like, well, your parents used Spanish mm-hmm. as the secret language that they could use in front of you that they knew you would never use because they never taught it to you. So you always hated Spanish. You never spent time in Mexico. So you hate Mexicans. And I'm like, holy shit, that makes so much sense. I can't learn Spanish because I hate Mexicans. Well, let's let's explore this just a little bit further, okay? It's not my fault. No, 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 but let me just explore this a little further. Um, how many other Mexican people while you were growing up did you have exposure to? The difficult part of all of this is that, and I try and explain this to people, but my dad was different than other dads in the sense that my dad was from Mexico. My mom was f- technically from America, but on a border town. So she might as be legally, she yeah. was from America. And when they got together in this small, tiny town in the middle of the, a border town of Arizona, my dad said, we need to leave. If we're going to have kids together, we need to leave. We need to go to America. We need to have American kids. So my dad left Mexico. And when he left Mexico, he left Mexico. Yeah. In the sense that he's like, I'm going to be a good American. I'm going to have an American job and speak English. And I'm just going to love America. And so my my dad also left the culture. Yeah. And in a very big sense. So I, I was raised a, I, when I started, you know, really remembering things and paying attention, we were living in the suburbs in a really nice American neighborhood yeah. where I was not allowed inside of half of the houses of the kids in the neighborhood that I would play with. And I didn't understand why, cause I never saw my own skin. Yeah. So well, I had no but what other I, Mexican but what kids. I had no other Mexican family. It, right. Like it would be very rare that I would hang out with the Mexican side of my family. I was raised American, and there would just be times when I would look down and go, "Oh shit, I'm brown." Totally forgot that. Right. But but see, what I am positing here is that if your parents are your primary example of what a Mexican is how you how you feel about Mexicans would be a reflection of how you feel about your parents don't you think the, the way I always felt about my parents is oh man I loved growing up it was so nice I had such a good childhood. It, it was just so much fun growing oh, the up. fuck you ne- did. It, it, no, no, this is how I felt. It, it was always, oh, I had so much fun growing up. Like, it was just me and my brother and, and just, you know, we were really close. And I loved my parents and my dad, mm. whom I never saw. And when I did see, he would spend time with my brother and my mom, who never wanted to me to touch her who who never wanted to spend time with me and I spent all of my time in front of the cable box watching yeah. movies. Holy shit, I had a bad childhood, guys. <laughs> oh my god, I I was raised by cable television. Yes. No wonder I f- ended up the way I did. I was raised by Joe Bob Briggs and monster movies. I I and, and I get that because I had a very similar experience with my own family, uh, mm-hmm. except I I am a rude person, so I'm just like fuck them, you know. Yeah. I, I I I don't put up a pretense. 
I almost I almost made Deanna cry the other day. Yeah. Because she was over for Supernatural Saturday, which is when it, everyone comes to the house and watches Supernatural. And oh. I'm about to ruin Supernatural Saturday because fuck it, SNL is coming back. <laughs> and that's my thing. So I'm going to be ruining Supernatural Saturday. But um, Deanna was over and. Maxwell was sitting right next to me and he was talking about, oh, daddy, uh, I'm playing with my Transformers. And you know why Transformers are, 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 are cool? Transformers are cool because Transformers transform into things. And this is, uh, you probably think this is just a truck, but it's not a truck. It's Optimus Prime. And I'm like, okay, Maxwell, I don't like Transformers. I've never liked Transformers. So there's a thing in my head that says I hate Transformers. And Deanna said, why do you hate Transformers? And I'm like, you've never heard this story? Okay, I'll tell you this story. The short and skinny of it is, I was never allowed to have Transformers because we were poor, but we were pretending to be rich, and we could never afford Transformers. And then I just kept begging and begging my family until one day on my birthday, they let me buy one Transformer, so I bought a Transformer. And then once I brought it home, an older neighbor could kid came to the house and said hey i heard you got a transformer for your birthday can i play with it and i gave it to him because he was an older kid and he picked it up and threw it on the ground and broke it into pieces and laughed at me and kicked me in the balls and ran away and when i told my mom what happened she got me in trouble because i wasn't nice to my toy and that toy cost a lot of money and i was I, and I got in trouble for it. So now when Michael Bay shows his fucking face in front of me, I just want to kill him and stab him over and over again in the neck because he's a fucking asshole. I will hate Transformers for the rest of my life. It's not Transformers' <laughs> fault. It's my fucking parents' fault because they suck. Yes. And I tell this story to Deanna and she's just there with like tears in his eyes going, oh, my God. Oh. Your parents weren't nice. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just figuring this out, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. My parents kind of sucked. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Which, is, of which fun is why program. the podcast is therapy. Yes. Mm-hmm. But but the thing is, is that I, I, like, I didn't have to take fucking uh, language. So then I went to college, and I'm like, God damn it. Now they're saying I have to take a language for for one whole year. Okay, I'll take two semesters of Spanish, no problem. And so I took one semester of Spanish, and I got a C. And the only reason I got a C is because the professor was Spanish. He was a Mexican guy, and he knew that I had the background, but that I had a hard time with the specifics. But because he was Mexican, he's like, okay, we're done with language. Now we're going to learn about the culture. And it's like, holy shit, the culture? I got this. What what are we going to do this week? All this week, we're going to be learning how to dance the samba. Uh And I'm like, thank you, three caballeros. I got this. (laughs) Got this whole week. I got this down. Because Donald Duck is a fucking <laughs> hornball, so I'm going to pass this week. Yes. But then, like, I take Spanish 102, and just like fucking King of the Hill, I get some southern white chick with an with a southern accent teaching me about, hola, como estas? And it's like, damn, I thought you were a stereotype. So, okay, I've got a white southern chick teaching me Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, listen to this one, okay? I might have mentioned this before, but but my school did not did not have that language requirement. Um, But when I went to the State University of New York at Stony Brook, um, that's a mouthful, right? And like, I didn't directly go from high school, so so. When I got there, I had a I had a language requirement then, you know, and I didn't think about American Sign Language, so I was like, "Well, everybody takes Spanish, so I'll take Spanish." I mean, how hard can it be? Every everybody does Spanish, you know what I mean? Everybody yeah. does Spanish. I don't see why everybody. I can't do Spanish. Okay, but the State University of New York at Stony Brook would come up with weird experimental 
teaching philosophies. So when I took the Spanish class, they had taken the philosophy of full immersion. Oh, God damn it. I hate full immersion. We will fully emerge you in, in Spanish, which meant the Spanish teacher came into class speaking Spanish speaking and Spanish. speaking I'm Spanish in, 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 exclusively. And, and I'm like, I, I don't understand Spanish. Yeah. I, I don't understand. I, 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 eh. So I bombed that, that big time, really fucked up my GPA. I think I got yeah. by. I think I got by with a D, and I think the only reason I got I got by with a D is that um, the teacher was a big fucking film nut. He is he is yeah. literally the one who introduced me to Pedro Almodovar. Nice. Okay, so he realized that he can get away with showing movies. So, so it was in that class that I said that I saw. Um, what did I ever do to deserve this? Yeah, one of Pedro Almodovar's early fucking movies. This this was like before he broke with "Tie Me Up, Tie Me Down." You yes, know? which uh, I saw at a very young age, and I probably should not have. Yeah, you probably shouldn't that, have. That that uh, scuba diver toy scene was burned into my brain at like age 10 or something. <laughs> so so that was so I, I was into film, so we used to talk a lot after class. You know. And yeah. it was after class so we could speak English. Um <laughs> So I think I only got that D because he liked me and he just didn't want to fail me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, but I, I, I failed Spanish 102, so I still had to take uh, a language credit. And that's when someone told me, oh, take sign language. It's the easiest, it's the easiest class. Yeah. So, I, and so I took it, and what I learned was, number one, most people talk with their hands anyway. Yeah. I'm talking with my hands right now, and I'm just recording audio, number one. Number two, um, the reason why I was so successful in sign language is because a lot of sign language, and they don't tell you this, um, a lot of sign language is in the face. Not only do you have to like sign the proper signs, but also sort of act it out on the face. You can't you can't uh, use your hands to say I'm scared and then have like a poker face. Yeah. It's nonverbal communication. Thank you, honey. You have to act out some of this on your own face. And so what I lacked in signing, I made up for with the fact that I just have a very expression, expressionally expression, full expression ish expressionally gifted. Expressive, thank you, honey. Expressive face. So I, I took sign language. I ended up taking sign language for a year and a half, and I said, "Oh man, I know sign language. I know sign language so much. I'm so great at sign language." And I thought that up until I saw fucking Baby Driver. <laughs> I don't know fucking shit. <laughs> This movie is fucking shaming me, is the long-winded point that I was trying to get. This movie is Steve shaming me. Yeah. Because I know so little, like nothing, 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 nothing. He wants butter on his sandwich. Nothing, 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 nothing. No, he wants it to the edges. He wants it to the edges, yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. God damn it, I don't know sign language. Way to go! Yeah. I don't remember things from college. Mm-hmm. So and 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 uh, one of the reasons I say I really should have failed that Spanish class, okay, yeah. is because basically with this whole shit, after the second week I mentally bailed out of the whole fucking course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like yeah, 
you're showing up, but you just don't give a shit. You don't do the reading. You you, you just don't do anything. You know, so I, I failed yeah. every test and final and midterm. I, and I know everything. how you feel. I yeah. bailed out of a lot of classes. But because I was in religious studies and I, and I w- was uh, focused on Buddhism, uh, I had taken Chinese. Yeah. Where they taught it like a normal language class. Because I'm walking out of the Spanish like, how fucking stupid am I? Everybody learns Spanish. It's what it's what you do. Yeah. So why am I the fucking moron who can't learn Spanish? So I took the Chinese class and I was fucking picking up Chinese like a motherfucker. Yeah. So yes. And 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 I'm going to have to break down and find out exactly what they were saying in those scenes. Yeah. I was watching yeah. it trying to guess because like some signs are, are kind of obvious yeah you know yeah i'm so upset fuck you in particular knowledge <laughs> yeah so upset with my lack of knowledge of sign language but goddamn i love this movie it, and it's gotten amazing reviews it got an eight out of ten on imdb which is pretty good it got a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is certified fresh. But that's not all. It got a, a an amazing Nine Eagles on Flag Lover. It got an astounding 97% on Hector Pants, <laughs> which is a new site where a guy named Hector watches movies with his pants. He doesn't wear pants and watch the movies he literally buys a ticket for both himself and his pants and the reviews on his site are written some of the half by hector and half by his pants anyway it's a great place to go and and, and learn about how pants feel about movies it that's, got that's, an easy... that's interesting that's interesting yeah. though because yeah because somebody would come into the theater and they would look at you and, and be like Oh, can you can you move those pants from that chair? It's like, no, those no, pants have a ticket. I bought a ticket. Yeah, I bought a ticket for those pants. This film got an eighty six percent on Metacritic, but it got a whopping one hundred and seventeen percent on Mechacritic, which is the same as Metacritic, but more for giant robotic versions of critics. <laughs> It got nine Tony the Tiger I boners. Thought, I thought on... Muslims were going to come into that somewhere. Nope, 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 not at all. It got nine Tony the Tiger boners on Furry Watch. To be fair, I only go there for the reviews. Okay. It got 89 scrunchies on this fucking movie, Doc TV. That one was written by Natasha, just want to be clear. But. No, I'm saying this is the point where I said, God damn it, honey, do you have any fake movie reviewing sites? And you said, how about this fucking movie.tv? And I wrote it down and put your name in brackets. <laughs> but it's not all good, though. There were some bad reviews. This film got a negative 17 on Plumbus. I, I have to get this out of my system real quick, real quick. Okay. Okay. Mecha critic. Okay. Mecha critic. Mecha critic. Yes. yes. I it's give this. I, but for robots. No, hold on. I get, I, I'm going with my version. I give this movie five. Nice. Nice. Mecha okay. critics. Yeah. So, oh, Mecha. I got it. I finally yeah. got it. Just FYI, I finally got it. No, I'm thinking of Mecha Godzilla, and not the actual Pilgrimage to yes. Mecha. Yes. Okay. Two different worlds there. But, but um, they all this, still work. Yeah. This film got a negative seventeen on Plumbus, which I think is a shame. I'm really upset with the people in Plumbus. 
And this film, if you can believe it, this film got only two schmeckles on Fleeb. Oh, really? That only two schmeckles. Like what the hell? Only two schmeckles? Fucking they gave the mummy 3.68 schmeckles. It's yeah. obvious now that Universal paid for those schmeckles. They must have because the mummy sucked just that bad. But you do also have to you do also have to consider the exchange rate of the schmeckles. Yes, you that know, is so good. so that so when they give the schmeckles you'll have to you'll have to look up the foreign exchange rate you know because two schmeckles at the time they gave it could have could have uh been three maybe even four american schmeckles yeah yeah now there's a lot to talk about in this picture but the first thing i wanted to talk about is holy shit tristar pictures is still a thing really didn't they just merge with Columbia? Are you okay, honey? Are you okay? I'm fine. You doing good? Uh, I just dropped some. Okay. Plastic. Well, no offense or anything, but I'm just going to kind of walk around with the podcast. Okay. Fuck off, Steve. I love Fuck you, off. too. I love you, too. Try to star pictures is still a thing. I thought that they they had gotten bought out or merged with Columbia. Yeah, so did I. Because I don't know. I've seen often in a movie it opening up with the Columbia woman with the torch and the TriStar picture uh, Pegasus side by side, and they looked good together. They looked like they belonged together. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, this picture was made by. Tristar Pictures, you know, the fucking Pegasi jumping over clouds in a triangle. Like, that's still a thing. I don't know when the last time was. I saw a Tristar Pictures film. Maybe uh, City Slickers 2, The Legend of Curly's Gold. Yeah. I don't know when the last time was I saw a Tristar Pictures logo in something that, that wasn't a VHS tape. Just seems weird. Yeah. And also, huh? holy shit, Paul Williams is still alive. He did so much cocaine. Yes. He did. He did so much cocaine. And and if oh, you ask me, him. if you ask me, I I think I think it shows. He doesn't oh, yeah. he doesn't okay. look right anymore and it's not just his age. Oh yeah. Yes. No understood yeah I, I i i did not point out paul williams as we were watching it because paul williams creeps genie out that's so funny that's so funny that's so funny that you didn't point out paul williams because i pointed the shit out of paul williams yeah yeah because i you um, pointed paul into... williams out to me <laughs> yeah I movie ninja the hell out of this uh, out of Natasha, and I'm like, honey, just to let you know, uh, the bad guy from Phantom of the Paradise is in this movie. Yeah. I know how much you hated that movie when we saw it together. And and since since she's not here, uh, Jeannie's review basically comes down to she liked it, but she kind of considers it like a boys movie. Yeah, no, no, I heard that earlier in the in the podcast and yeah. it stuck with it. So, yeah, no, I got you there. But fucking Paul Williams, the Phantom of the Goddamn Paradise all up in here. Bizarre ass albino cocaine midget. Yeah. So, let's do a a wee bit of stats. This is oh, a God, 2000 yeah. This is a 2017 film. It came out this March. And I will never get over the theater to DVD turnaround. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will never, I will never understand that. It hasn't come out on DVD yet, but it was just released as a digital download. It cost $34 million to make. Nice. That's, that's. 
that blows my goddamn mind. The mummy I, costs five times this movie to make. I, I, I got to believe that Edgar Wright had to have called in a lot of favors. Yes. What, 30, uh, whatever stroke he has in her. Huh? You're not getting Jamie Foxx. You're not getting. Well, okay, okay. John uh, Hamm is Kevin, a big-ass deal. Kevin Spacey is very altruistic when it comes to the arts. So yeah. there's a good possibility yeah. that and that Punisher isn't the Punisher yet. So maybe like that's negotiable in the beginning. Well, probably by the time he contracted to this, he, he most likely was not contracted to the Punisher yet. Yeah. So he only would have been of interest to, to walking dead fans. Yeah, yeah, I'm assuming that he was only, yeah, Walking Dead fans at that point. Yeah. Although I'm happy to say he didn't, since he didn't die. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. Is this the Punisher? Yeah. Yeah. My. And I'm really, really fucking happy that Baby did what Baby did. Yeah. With James Fox's character. Yeah. No, we haven't gotten to there yet. I, I have I said it the way I said yeah, it. thank you. I feel that Walking Dead Man um, is not really a very good actor. Okay. Yeah. I'm, but yeah. I'm, but he is brilliant at doing the Shane character. Yes. Because in Baby Daddy, he he's a version of the Shane character. And so yeah. is the Punisher. Yeah. That's what makes yeah. him so great for the fucking Punisher. Yeah. You know? Uh, d- yeah. Jamie Foxx does not come fucking cheap, man. Not after Django. Oh, hell yeah. You know? Yeah. And this movie, with all the characters we can put it into, I've really got to put it into more of the Pulp Fiction Tarantino ish category, which yeah. frankly, I, 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 I kind of hate to say it, but I, I think that may be a disservice to this movie. Yeah, with as much as I a, love Paul, this is more of like a musical movie. comedy than a than, okay, a, also, than a crime film. Wants, okay, you're saying Tarantino ish category. I kind of saw like a, a mix between um, Tarantino and uh, mm, Sasha Ray, the classic Pakistani filmmaker. No. Oh. Although there was there was clearly homage. Uh, Wes Anderson. Like yeah, like this with the music abilities of Wes Anderson and oh the music ability Wes Anderson makes no, a great like, fucking soundtrack. No, exactly. is what I'm saying. Yeah, like, no, he makes a great this fucking is soundtrack. So focused around music because of yeah. Baby, it, it made me it, it gave me the Wes Anderson music vibe because yeah. the Wes soundtrack and- every was so yeah good. every sound every song Wes Anderson uses is sp- specific and. Precise. Yeah, well, but the but see, song has to be here for this reason. And the songs in this movie were very spot on to oh, yeah. to the film, so it gave me that Wes Anderson vibe. But I can see the Tarantino vibe that the bunny's talking about. Yeah. Well, I I bring up the Tarantino vibe based off of your husband's uh, baby between Pulp Fiction and and Scott Pilgrim. So yeah. between those two. It, uh, I feel it is more Pulp Fiction than um, Scott Pilgrim. But I also say it's a disservice to this movie because that makes it sound like it's a Pulp Fiction ripoff, which it is not. This movie which it is, is not. No, yeah. this, yes. movie is, this movie is clearly, clearly a movie of its own. That, yeah, that's what I was just about yeah. to say. It is it is in a yeah. genre of its own, really, because yeah. it, it you can't really pin down a specific type that it's that it would fit in. Yeah. My my God, when I saw that one gunfight, I didn't notice it in the in like the first one or two, but there was that one gunfight where I was just like, 
holy fuck, that's genius. You know, when you, it's a goddamn gunfight. Like, there's no new and original way to do a gunfight. Just like there's no original way to do anything with with a zombie, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he fucking did, and it was fucking genius. To be fair, the there gunfire, are the, the gunfire was synced to the song. To the yeah, matching the music. Oh. Yeah, no, no, music. To be fair, there are interesting, unique, and original ways to use a zombie. How about this? Yeah. Your movie has a zombie that skips. That skips. That has not I would... been done before. So, well, yeah, but I would you, still put that in the I would still put that in the Fido category. Yeah, but still you've had zombies that that stumble, you've had zombies that run, which makes no fucking sense. Yeah. But you have one zombie that's just like do 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 do. I scientist. I have hard everything with zombies, but whatever. Um I just I got to go to bed, but I wanted okay. to say like okay, the whole time we suspect one person. Yes, no, of that's being the one the thing. Yeah, I call that the psycho effect because the whole movie, I am keeping an eye on Jamie Fox. Yeah, yeah, on that's and and on that's character. Like I said, I appreciate what Baby did with that, but you don't suspect the the antagonist to be the antagonist. But the entire time, I'm looking at him, and then I'm like. Picturing mm, yeah. Ham and Bubbly. Yeah. From oh, SNL. Ham and Ham and Bubble Ham and Michael Bublé. Yeah, Ham from and Bublé. It's yeah. Bublé. No, it's Bublé. <clears throat> yeah. From SNL. Like I just keep picturing all these skits that, that John Ham did on SNL yeah, and that's, I'm like That's my fault. And I'm like, okay, on one hand, you're fucking hilarious. On the other, you're pretty badass in this film. Yeah. I'm having a hard time. Yeah. You know, like consolidating those two in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> so. and he was also he was also very protective of Baby at first. Yeah, yeah, he was. And his reason for turning on Baby is, come on, completely fucking justified. Oh, absolutely. Oh, of course, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, I... even though he was going after the hero, who I loved. I could see his point. No, no, I can too. And yeah. and like at the end when he was like, I'm going to take away something you love. And he did what he did. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That was pretty fucking Damn. harsh. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty fucking harsh. Um, damn. But uh, uh, again, I'm going to bed. So I wanted to touch on the end, how realistic it was and yeah. how I appreciated that. Holy fuck. Yes. God damn yes, because that has and been there something aren't a I lot have of been where someone serves time. Yeah, because uh, I have been saying that for years. No, no, he was going there. Yeah, no, the fact that they were like about to fucking try to book it, and she was all gung ho to be Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, and then he was, like, yeah, no, let's not do that. And then yeah. he serves time. Like the ending is realistic, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, and twenty five years. Like a realistic yeah. sentence. Yeah. Exactly. Not but his bullshit. first parole is in five years. So more than likely due to the really, due to all of the nice people that showed up and mentioned all the good things that he did. More than likely okay. he no, got off in five years. Yes, he probably would have gotten off in five years, but that's still yeah. a stiff sentence. It's still a realistic yeah. sentence. And, and one second, yeah. one moment if you'll forgive me. Okay, one one moment. <coughs> cough, cough, cough. Spoilers. Cough, cough. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Say that after we completely blow the ending of the movie. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I tell you right now, now that I'm getting a chance to actually talk about this movie and appreciate this movie, go back to the comment when we when we started this section i'm falling in love with it now you know? yeah yeah you know, it's I, good to talk about i got home 
Steve was like, oh, I'm going to put this Ugh. on. And I told him, I said, you motherfucker, you did this deliberately so that you would make me watch this movie. But literally, you and watched the first five minutes of this goddamn beautiful fucking Steve movie. Was like, Steve was like, yeah, but just just watch this first sequence. Like, this is insane. And that's not even the most insane part of this movie. Yeah, the, the most this. insane sequence isn't the opening scene. It's the amazing opening credit scene after the opening scene where like the background is synced in with the music and he's walking just to get coffee and back. But it's all one scene and it's like fucking six minutes long. It's amazing. Not, Love a, that. not insane, but pretty damn impressive. impressive. Yeah. But yeah, so I was like, all right, well, I'm hungry. I might as well sit down and eat. And then I was done eating. I was like, God damn it. I'm fucking stuck. I have to see this movie through. I did and, not expect yeah. appreciate it as much as I did. Yeah. And I think that had I actually watched the trailer, I I, I, I never saw the trailer. I, I have a saw. suspicion yeah. that I have yeah. a suspicion that the trailer probably would have turned me off to this movie because it's like it's like oh no, th- there is no fucking way you're passing this kid off as a gangster. That yeah. is fucking well, ridiculous. Ridiculous! That is flat out. He's a a baby face. Oh, but he was tough as balls. Did you ever? Did you watch it? Watch the trailer or any of the previews after you watched the movie? No. Okay. See, they don't try to to put him off as as some sort of gangster. Yeah. Um, Steve, I, Steve doesn't remember watching, but I, I saw previews for it before it came out. I remember because. It, it never once tries to portray it in a light in which he would come off that way. And it was interesting because the previews are basically, and this is why I don't know why Steve doesn't remember it, but it is literally just music playing yeah. and it shows him with his earbuds in and it shows all the action, but you get none of the um, words. Yeah. You, you get no, none of the action sounds. All you hear is the music, and you get to see the action. Yes. But you, yeah. I don't like it is in the movie, thing. all you hear is the music. Uh, you, don't, yeah. you don't hear anybody arguing. You don't hear anybody talking. You don't hear the car tires screeching. You don't hear any of the like explosions or anything like that. Yeah. And I, I thought that was interesting in itself. And I only remember that today when Steve was showing me the movie. Yeah. I was like, shit, yeah. I've seen this preview. Hmm. And I thought it was interesting, uh, but it didn't catch my attention enough to remember it then yeah. and want to watch it later. But I'm also not a movie watcher. Yeah. No, you are not. But it was interesting enough for me to remember today. Bitch, yeah. does it look like I know anything about Barbara fucking Streisand? <laughs> but now, but now I also think that, that what I'm saying about how, he is he he does not come off like a tough guy you know he's got a baby face and things like that and and i feel that that is the real connection to scott pilgrim oh yeah you know because come on michael Sarah is no fucking action star either you know yeah but in so so in both movies we are strongly casting against type. Yeah. Okay. But and Edgar White, Edgar Wright sold that twice in a row. Scott Pilgrim, by the <clears throat> end of Scott Pilgrim, I I have I suspension is completely disbelief is completely suspended, and I totally buy into that that Michael Sarah is is just a kick-ass hero you know yeah you, you just buy into it and it's the same thing with this where where you buy into that that baby is a dangerous boy well yes that's but you need to when you see this kid, you do not expect him to be some badass who yeah. would shoot somebody. And that's intentional because they go along with the title, Baby Driver. It may have come from a song, yeah. but they also want to match the lead character with the image 
that yeah. you get when you think of baby. Baby is soft. A baby is innocent. A baby is incapable of caring for themselves. And that's the that's the exact image they want to portray with this kid. Yeah. And that's what they pull off. But they do it in such a way where it's just like, okay, well, obviously this kid's not going to be able to do all these things. And then by the end of the movie, he does. And you're completely convinced because you see him go from nah gradually to holy shit. Yeah. You know, but when, so, he, and, and but when he, really well, just like in Scott Pilgrim, but when he, when he gets to holy shit, you're completely bought in. Exactly. You, because it does not like, seem out of character in the slightest, you know, that's exactly and what I'm saying. I, I think another element here is again the diner. I think the diner gives the him fucking diner. Yeah, the fucking diner. I, I don't know if you heard Tasha. I mentioned I, I mentioned earlier that um, whenever you put a diner in a movie, it gives it a bit of a fifties vibe. And uh -huh. I I think in the, in particular in this case, the diner helped give him a little bit of a James Dean vibe. A little bit, a little bit. Because James like Dean was kind of was kind of baby faced, and you know, yeah, hanging out at the diner with the sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotta go to bed. Okay. So this movie cost only thirty four million dollars to make. I have no idea how it would it, it was made for that little. But here, the, the I'm, I'm thinking. Mummy. I'm thinking favors were called in, yeah. and and they were sold on. You know, people were were yeah. given a hard sell to be in this movie for way less than they would normally get paid. Yeah, the fucking mummy costs like five times that to be made, and, and I, there's no, there's nothing in that fucking film. And I bet you that thirty four million of that was just Tom Cruise's salary. Yeah, yeah, but good, good stuff here. Oh, Baby Driver made fucking two hundred and twenty-four point five million dollars in the box office. Oh, good job from a fucking thirty-four million dollar budget. Holy shit, that is a major fucking amount. Yeah. That is a major fucking amount. Dude. It was written. Yeah. Do not make a sequel to this, please. Oh hell no. Hell no. No, you can't. this is spot on perfect. There is nothing you can do in a sequel that will not fuck this up. Yeah. It was written and directed by Edgar Wright. He did Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, the show Spaced, I fucking love Scott Pilgrim, and now this. This sleeper hit. Scott Pilgrim, so, I'll take a sequel on. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. This sleeper ass fucking hit opened at number two in the American box office, and it only lost to the massive, unstoppable juggernaut that was Despicable Me 3. <laughs> but it's surprising that the only thing that could beat this film was fucking Minions. Like, that's how surprisingly successful this film was. Yeah. This film is now officially the biggest hit in Edgar Wright's career. Oh, yeah. Fuck. And I am sure, and I am sure has pumped new life into his career after oh, the trouble yeah. over Ant-Man. Oh, hell yeah. You know, because that was, a, for, for Edgar Wright, that was a ballsy move to walk away from Ant-Man. Yeah, you know that to took, walk away from Marvel for any director. Yeah, that took huge balls, and and really Edgar Wright, who who was he at the time? You know, movie yeah. nerds like us know him. You know, yeah, but yep. it's still just like Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim, which really didn't do well. You know, yeah. And then he pulls out of Ant Man, and I had a bad feeling that, that that's pro that's it, that's it for Edgar Wright. His career is over. But no, Mike, uh, 
let me let me say it. Let me say it. This is a perfect movie. This is just a flat oh. out yep. perfect yep. movie. There is not a single thing in this movie that you could change that would not hurt it. it to be fair, I think the random woman in the dis- diner leaves a bit to be desired. Like the the only the only negative part I could even find in this film is just Hi, complete and total stranger. I'm going to tell you my life story. I'm a woman working in a diner. I just want to let me tell you my 100% dream, and it's perfect. Yeah, you might have a you might have a point there. But oh my god, I love this fucking movie. I love the characters. I love the script. I don't know when the last time was that I said the sentence. I love Kevin Spacey in this. (laughs) When was the last time I fucking said that? I've 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 always been a Kevin Kevin Spacey mark. I can't help it. I I, I American yeah, Beauty K Pax. I even like the uh, Bobby Darren fucking movie he did. I I did like K Pax, but that was because I read the book, and and the book is really good. Yeah. Um, the soundtrack is so fucking amazing. The soundtrack, I bought the soundtrack. It begins with, and this, it, this is what I love. The soundtrack begins with, was he slow? Yes. Which is an actual track, and it's the first song on the soundtrack. And and when I, I downloaded the soundtrack before I saw the film, and I'm like, was he slow? What the hell is this? Like, literally, what the hell is this? And then I saw the movie, and it's like, oh, my God, this is, like, the, the greatest song in the world now. Yeah. And then I saw it with Natasha, and I swear to God, I've played that song, like, ten times today. And the wording of that was masterful. The The wording of, of the actual scene, not the, not the song, although the song was masterful, yeah. too. Oh, you mean the scene where he's uh, playing the song to all the people who don't believe him? No, when he recorded what they were saying. Oh, okay. Okay. Because Natasha Jamie Fox... specifically loved that bit where he's playing the track to the people, and they all have these weird fucking faces except for the one girl who's like, baby, this shit is bananas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he was able to justify what clearly sounded like a lie. But in the first yeah. bit, I loved, I loved the turnaround in the dialogue that Kevin Spacey did, you know, these people had just come back from driving with baby. And he says, retarded, retarded means slow. Do you think he was slow? Yeah. It was like, it was like a perfect setup. Cause, cause now you're, now you're equating it from mentally deficient to speed yeah and now you can't say that baby is slow yeah one of my personal moments of pride in this film is that the soundtrack is amazing I love the soundtrack and of course I know Radar Love and I know Easy Like Sunday Morning but one of the cool songs that they use in the soundtrack is a song that I already know and love and know all the lyrics to. And it meant so much to me to hear that song in the podcast, in the movie, because it made me feel like, oh my God, I know this song. I am cool. Yes. I know this song. I already know and love this song. I am one of the chosen one. Yes. But uh, my 
dad had a job in El Centro, California for a long time. And my parents, we would spend our summers and stuff and, you know, vacations in El Centro, California with my dad. But my dad would always be working. So my mom was always desperate to find stuff for us to do. And every once in a while, we would go to Mexico and literally right on the border of between California, El Centro, California and Mexico, there was a big ass store run by pack two Pakistani brothers who would literally just sell for super cheap bootleg copies of all popular American albums. Okay. And it's just, hello, welcome to our store. My, my name is Sanjay for $5. You can get three albums. Nice. And so, you know, my mom would give me $10 and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going away with like seven popular Amer- American album bootlegs. Yeah. And so, like, I would just go nuts. And one of the albums that I got was Young MC. Okay. And sure, I knew Bust a Move, but oh, my God, there were some great ass tracks on that fucking CD. He's an amazing fucking rapper, or at least he was when he's young. Now he's old MC. Yes. But um, one song is used in this movie. It's the two uh, guys who are vaping in their car. Yes. At the end of the movie. Uh huh. They're like, are you packing? Have you shot that gun before? Yes, I have. Literally five minutes ago, and they just <laughs> raised their hands. Yeah, they're using a young MC song in that, and I'm like, holy shit, I already have that on my phone. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. So here's the story of the making of the film. Okay. Edgar Wright got the idea uh, way back in 1994, way back in 1994, he had an idea for this. He heard the song Baby Driver and he's like, OK, a guy he uses songs to measure how long the robbery robbery is going to take. He's constantly listening to music. The music is like his guide to his crime world. And OK, this is going to be a movie. I don't know if it will ever happen because we're going to have to use a lot of music that's a lot of licensing this is going to be a difficult film but i have the film idea in my head and it's 1994 so he just keeps that in lock one day he wants to make this film so in 2003 a british rock glam brit pop band called mint royale okay Go to Edgar Wright and they say, Edgar, you're amazing. You're British. We love you. We have this new song. It's two minutes and 57 seconds. Exactly. Will you make a video for us? It can be whatever you want. And he says, well, I have an idea for an opening of a film. I always wanted to make this film. I'm always pitching it to Hollywood people and they always say no. Yeah. Here's an idea. What if the video for your song is the opening to this film I always want to do? Nice. And so and so not only will I make an awesome video for you, but this will be like the proof of idea for me in my film nice so it, I, the the song i believe is called blue song it, it it's by the band mint royale and here's the kicker edgar wright is a british director he's in england this is a british band yeah. so he goes around and says i need some british guys to be in this film. Well, of course, the fat friend from uh, Shaun of the Dead will be in this film, but I need some British guys. Um, you know what? Was he in it? Was yeah, he no, he, he's in he's in the music video. He's in the oh, music okay. video. Yeah. But then, like, uh, Edgar Wright is looking around for other people to be in the music video, and he goes, you know what? I like that show over there. What's it called? The Mighty Boosh. Oh, okay. Why don't you two guys come over here and be in our music video? 
And so uh, the the guy, the younger, cooler guy who plays old Greg, yeah. he's the driver. And they pull in. I specifically made a point of not watching this music video until I had watched the movie like three times. <laughs> but they pull into like a parking garage and they're like, and the the driver's like, okay, so how long is this going this going to take? Oh, about three three minutes. No, but how long specifically is it going to take? Oh, three minutes exactly. Oh, I don't know, maybe uh two minutes and ninety seven seconds, and he's flipping through a uh, a, a, a container of CDs because it's uh two thousand and three, yeah. so there's no iPods yet. So he picks out the perfect CD and he goes, "Okay, I've got it." And he puts the CD in the car and he goes, "Okay." Go now. And basically, it's the opening of the movie. But yeah. without the car chase. So eventually, they rush back into the car, and they've got their guns, and they're like, okay, let's go. And the driver goes, excuse me, but that was more like three minutes. <laughs> but it's amazing, because number one, it's the opening of the movie. And number two, oh, my God, old Greg is back. Yeah. The mighty Boosh is back. Good job, guys. I were not. That ties all of the podcast's shit together. It's like yeah. a greatest hits record over here in this episode. The mighty Boosh, Young MC, Paul Williams. I'm surprised that the Humpty Dance and Misha Collins weren't in this fucking film. <laughs> or like, oh, Misha Collins, nice. who plays Castiel, the angel yeah. on Supernatural. Yeah. Oh my god, look who's the bad guy in Baby Driver. It's the kid from the day my kid went punk. <laughs> oh, how how uh, how amazing is that? This <laughs> ties in so well. But yeah, the video's on YouTube and you should watch it. It's amazing. It's basically just this movie. Yes. Now And we even talked I about Flea when we did the Big Lebowski. Yes! Yeah, yeah. It, it all ties it. It all ties it. It all ties it. And even though we haven't formally done it, we've talked about Django many times. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Django, Pulp Fiction. Um, hold on, Django. Bella's here. Hold on, Bella's in front of me and she's showing me something. What are you, what, what's going on, Bella? Guns! This is a guy doing the cup song with guns? You mean like the cup song from uh... Pitch Perfect? Yeah. Um, okay, so you, number one, you find weird things on YouTube. Oh, hell yeah. No, he's doing it with guns. It, it, it's really guns instead of cups. That that gun flipping, that, that, that cup flipping things where they usually use the red solo cups? And they, they flip them and, and make a song out of it? No, no, no. He's doing the song Cups from Pitch Perfect, except instead of like a hitting a cup and flipping the cup around, he's loading a gun and shooting red solo cups. Oh. Okay. It's quite amazing how he does it in a perfect way that 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 sinks in with the song. Okay, now well, walk away though, Bella, because this is a video on YouTube. And I don't want to have it on the podcast. That is amazing, though. That is amazing. I'll and it say and it ties in. Yeah, it ties into the to the gunfight where it was all yeah. sunk to the song. Now, as much as I would like to break down the plot, I'm totally not going to because there is there are still a lot of people that haven't seen this film. Yeah. So seriously, mm -hmm. go out and see this fucking film. It's it's amazing. It's fucking genius. It's absolutely fucking genius. Yeah. Even still, it's even still in a few theaters, uh, for yeah. shit's sake. I will say this. There's a few surprises in it. For example, what Natasha mentioned, I was convinced as all hell that uh, yeah. uh, it was all going to come down to Jamie Foxx's character, Leon. Yes. But I really figured that he was the bad guy, but then they psychoed me. Uh-huh. And they psychoed me. A, anyway, I love this movie. I, I know I haven't said that before on this episode of the podcast, 
but I love this movie. 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 I have seen this movie three times uh, yeah. over the past four days, which is impressive. One thing I noticed the last time I watched it, and I'm really proud of myself for this because it takes multiple watches to notice this. The first time you see our hero baby with his foster father, they are channel surfing on the TV. Yes. And they're watching a number of things. And I remember the first time I watched it going, wait a second, why are they showing a, like a scene from Fight Club if it's not going to like play in? Like, that's weird. Yeah. But all of the majority of the things they watch do play in later. For example, the specific quote from uh, Fight Club, there he's a uh, baby's changing the channels and it's uh, Brad Pitt. And he goes, how's that working out for you? Yeah. And then he changes the channel. He says that to the Asian who puts the Asian back in home invasion. Yes. When they're all uh, eyeing him, and he goes, hat, your tattoo says hat. He goes, yeah, it originally said hate, but I kind of covered up the E because that increased my chances of employment. And baby <laughs> says, how's that going for you? Yeah. And a number of things like I got the fact that he watched a scene from Monsters, Inc. in the beginning of the film. And then he uses that on Kevin Spacey later in the movie. Yeah. Like, I got that, but I was impressed at how many other lines that he hears, he uses. For example, one thing I didn't notice until I watched it with Natasha was the fact that um, when, after the first robbery, when they're leaving on the elevator, Baby is listening as everyone else is talking, and uh, John Hamm is talking with his girl, and she says, what are we going to do with the money? And he says, we're going to go to blank. That's the finest, whiningest, diningest place yeah. to go to for post-revelry uh, or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that's the same line he uses on his girlfriend, and they go to that restaurant, and that's where he sees Kevin Spacey after they're square. Yeah. And then yeah. basically let's, he's let's, just listening to all of these things and using them. Yeah. Throughout the rest of his life. There's a bunch of tiny little things like that in the movie where he hears them in the beginning and he uses them later in the film. Also, while he's changing channels, the video for the band Mint Royale plays on the TV. Nice. Let me give you a small example of how stupid I could be sometimes. Okay. Hmm. And, yeah. and forgetful. I'm getting more forgetful as I get older. Um, I, I am halfway to crotchety old man to okay. begin with. I, I bet by the time I'm 60, I, I'm just going to be walking up to random people and just going, go fuck yourself. You know? Yeah. And, and, and like, that's it. So, so, when I am watching Baby Driver for the second time and I see the clip from Monster Inc. Yeah. You know, and, and they do that line. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's so that's so fucked up. I just heard that line somewhere recently. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we come to, come around to the end, I'm like, I'm a fucking moron. <laughs> I'm a fu- I'm adorable. a fucking moron. <laughs> that is adorable. <laughs> anyway, I love this movie. I know I haven't said that. I love this movie so much. I I, I don't think I have raved about a movie this much on the podcast before. Yeah. No, this is a great fucking movie. I mean, I even <laughs> found a nits pick with Guardians of the Galaxy too, and I love that shit. Yeah, you did love make a experience. you did make a bit of a valid point with the um, and you know what, I, I do kind of have a nits pick, but it it kind of aided the comedy when huh. you have when you have two the opening scene when you have two of the I two of the identical exact same cars on the other side of the highway. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's a bit 
contrived, yeah, it. but it's funny. Yeah. But I love this movie. I love this movie. I love this goddamn movie. I love this movie. I, I, I could talk about it for a lot longer, I think. But, dude, we just yeah. passed the six-hour mark on this I on know. This I know. It's impressive. This is the anti-mummy. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, Basic. like, we might not be able to close out the show because we, we've just fallen asleep. Yeah. If we actually yeah. talk about this movie much longer. Yeah. I love this movie. It's beautiful on so many levels. Oh yeah, the opening scene. The opening scene is it, it, during the credits, not the op- the actual opening scene, but the scene during the credits where he's going just he's just going to get coffee. It's such a masterful feat. Yeah, it's all one shot, and he's walking to get coffee, and the background starts sinking in. With what he's hearing in his uh, headphones, it's so fucking amazing. Yeah, and like, the nephew. Oh the, yeah, no, I love the nephew. The fucking nephew, like, like, I, I didn't even think about it, you know, until we came around to the other end. But I was like, man, if there is ever a throwaway character in a movie. It's this nephew, you yeah. know, he's there for a moment of cuteness or, you know, the uh, snotty little kid, you know, something like that. And then, God damn it. No, he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. He was every bit a, a fully actualized character as everyone yeah. else in this movie. And fucking Kevin Spacey. What a beautiful job of. Being the tough guy, yet very subtly showing how much he really loved Baby. Yeah. There are so many lines that that I have been quoting and that I could see myself quoting. I need to watch it one or two more times to get the quotes down. But, for example, like, do you see this? I just drew a map on chalk in a chalkboard while talking. Do you understand how... (laughs) Fucking impressive that is. Yes. Love this fucking movie. I've definitely set a record for the amount of times that I have said the sentence. I love this fucking movie. I I know I haven't said it before, but God yeah. damn it, I love this fucking movie. Let's. That's all I've got. Yeah. Let's let's wrap it up before we completely blow the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. Although we already gave away the ending. You know, yeah. it's um, still worth even knowing that even it, you, you there's no spoiling this movie. There's no spoiling this movie. Yeah, no, there is not. We there could we no. could tell you every fucking scene in detail. Yeah. And you would still have I, to watch this movie. Yeah, I could have broken down the entire plot in the way that I normally do. And still you you'd be surprised by this film. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So bunny. Yes. What the hell are we doing next week? After long consideration, long and thoughtful consideration. Cause I I have three movies here, not right now, but you know, I, 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 I'm not given choices. Uh, but I have three movies because we got to do something special for Woodmas, and and that's fine with me. You know, I, I I am honored to be born in the same same month as my savior. Okay. Yeah. And it is also Halloween, so yes, I I'm gonna go with hardcore. I'm gonna go with some hardcore stuff this month. Okay. Starting with blood sucking freaks. Blood, blood sucking freaks. It is on YouTube. I found it earlier. I could send you the link. Okay. Blood sucking freaks. Gotcha. Next week, people. 
starting the month of October. Very excited about this. We will be watching the film Blood Sucking Freaks next week. Because it's also Halloween. Halloween. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's the month it's of Halloween. Halloween so it's take birthday. the month to observe. Right. It's my birthday. Yeah. It's Halloween. So let's get all of that into play. 